what's in the box? Twenty years ago, Peter and Bobby Fairley teamed up with the comedic powerhouse of Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels to bring us one of the most gloriously stupid comedies of all time, Dumb and Dumber. And 20 years later, the four have finally reunited to bring us the continuing misadventures of Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn, Dumb and Dumber 2. As someone who had the original movie on a loop as a kid, I am beyond excited. Even though I know we can end up with another Blues Brothers 2000 situation on our hands. But hell, anything the Fairleys do with this movie has to be funnier than New Line Cinema's failed attempt from 2003 to follow up this comedy hit without any of the people who made that movie a comedy hit. Dumb and Dumber-er when Harry met Lloyd. How did New Line make a new Dumb and Dumber movie without the people who made Dumb and Dumber, you ask? Why make it a prequel, of course! Because don't you want to know what Lloyd and Harry were up to in high school? And while we're at it, don't you want to know why Hannibal Lecter likes eating people? Or whether Darth Vader ever said the word yippee? Well, no! No, we do not! Most prequels are made just for the sake of money, and Dumb and Dumberer is one of the worst examples of such a prequel. It offers almost nothing in the laughter department and tells us nothing about our main heroes, which helps us appreciate the first one more than we already did. Hence, it is only a completely unnecessary cash grab, and nothing more. So you're telling me there's a chance. I wish I were, Lloyd. I wish I were. Yeah! So what were Harry and Lloyd up to before they became buddies and rode around in a giant dog? Well, in Lloyd's case, he was the adopted son of a high school janitor who was able to acquire a vinyl copy of Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby in 1986, four years before that song was ever recorded. Congratulations, movie! You've shown how little of a shit you give, and we're not even five minutes in. Unless there's a deleted scene that explains this mistake. Vanilla! It's chocolate! Your cousin, Chocolate Ice? You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this! On his way to the first day of school, Lloyd runs into a new student by the name of Harry Dunn and acquires his famed chip tooth in the process. Despite that, they immediately become the best of friends and catch the eye of Principal Eugene Levy, who's planning to start up a special needs class just so he can win a grant and take the money to run off with the school lunch lady played by SNL's Sherry O'Terry. You ever wonder why Sherry O'Terry never got the film career that Will Ferrell got? Well, she did movies like this. So now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Blow. So Harry and Lloyd enlist a varied cast of outcasts for their special needs class, including a young Shia LaBeouf, seeing here doing his latest art piece, I Am A Horse's Ass. And as they stumble into uncovering their principal's secret plan, they keep failing at trying to recreate the charm of their older selves. As Lloyd, Eric Christian Olsen does a pretty solid Jim Carrey impression. I like it a lot. I like it a lot but doesn't have Jim Carrey's sense of character or subtlety. We're done, pal! Finito! The end! Out feeder schnitzel! <laughs> and where Harry was the smarter and more logical of the two in the first one, Derek Richardson's Harry is just as stupid as Lloyd is. Maybe stupider, and comes off more like a Bobcat Goldthwait impression than a Jeff Daniels one. Hello, Jessica. Harry, Mrs. Harry Jessica. Mr. Harry Jessica. Hi! Is your daughter home? <laughs> The only actor returned from the first one is that woman who played Mrs. Noodleboard. Noodleboard! And she doesn't even have any lines, let alone reprise the role of Mrs. Noodleboard. I don't care how it's pronounced! If anyone comes out here looking good among all the wasted talents at play, it's Bob Saget. And yes, I do realize I made that statement as the father of Harry's love interest, who provides the biggest laughs of the movie. There's shit! And that, kids, is how I met your mother. Look what he did! He shit all over the wall! If anything, Dumb and Dumberer has more in common with all those god-awful American Pie rip-off teen comedies from the early 2000s than it does with Dumb and Dumber. And aside from the few times the screenwriters come up with a funny line that might have fit in the first one, most of the jokes end up being painfully stupid instead of delightfully stupid. She's a foreign exchange student. She obviously doesn't speak the English. 
ching chong ching ching chong ching chong ching. And while the first movie had an underpinning of reality, this movie ends up becoming a straight up cartoon. In fact, if the screenwriters were writing a prequel to the animated TV series instead of the movie, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. So in case I haven't made it clear already, Yes, you may add Dumb and Dumberer to the shit pile of sequels to Jim Carrey movies, but as long as we still have Son of the Mask, it will never be considered the worst of them. You're just too good to be true. Dear God, please let Dumb and Dumber 2 be good. Find a happy place, Jesse. Find a happy place. Now it's time to suck back on Grandpa's old cough medicine, so make sure you put it on Seabass's tab before you play the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time the movie mentions it's set in 1986. Special Needs Clash 1986. The movie plays another song not from the 80s on its soundtrack. Oh, you got a feeling alright. Ah uh, yes, Spoon and Good Charlotte, my favorite 80s bands. Another reference is made to the first movie. We're the Felchers. My name's Freda. No, it was a girl. Uh, Freda Felcher. You're it. <laughs> You're it. Oh, hey look, a turbo wax truck. That's the same stuff Lloyd gave Harry to give him diarrhea. How appropriate, seeing as this movie is a big pile of shit. And take a double shot when you spot Hulk Hogan's No Holds Barred on a TV. How incredible that a TV station got a copy of this movie three years before it was made. Holy fuck, this movie sucks. And on the nudity watch, all I've got for you is a completely egregious dream sequence, complete with bikini babes, lesbian kissing, and a chick with three boobs. Wait a minute, those... Those look familiar. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Dumb and Dumber-er, when Harry met Lloyd, ends up not having what Dumb and Dumber was having, and lands on a 2 out of 10. Just when I thought prequels couldn't possibly be any dumber, they go and make something like this and completely fail to redeem themselves! <laughs> I'm Jesse Shade for JoeBlow.com, and after reliving the horror that is that musical number from Son of the Mask, I think we have a new contender for most annoying sound in the world. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? You're just too good to be true, can't take my eyes off you. You feel like having a touch, I want to hold you so much. Guys! 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 Hey everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you though.